That's better. That's better. So now we're on the run. And um, back on the pirate Sampan. However, um, this time the greedy pirates, you know, sold out our heroes. And this battleship, like a naval gunship, approaches. And it's go time. You know, Rambo decaps one guy, shoots the. Uh, the pirate leader at close range like he's escaping like he's going out the door and and Rambo shoots him with the shotgun and it saws the pirate leader in half like the top half falls out backward into the into the cab and like like inside the door and his bottom half like his legs are like still running out the door so they go the other way outside uh, probably like right off the deck it's pretty 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 um pretty cool and you know like with the decap uh, rambo also destroys like another guard's rib cage like he goes one way hits the guy in the rib cage and then i think he comes back up with the decap um it's really really cool um so he, he busts that guy's rib cage and and when Rambo kind of goes out to the deck to, to take on the gunship. There's another pirate that comes and Co saves Rambo, taking another, you know, guy out like via AK-47. So the sandpan's like shredded from the gunship. Like the gunship starts firing on it. It's shredded. Co and the POW jump the water and swim off. Rambo grabs the uh, RPG that... um I didn't mention earlier, but earlier, you know, yeah, that whole RPG. Actually, there's a little more to it. There's a little, um, because there's like a lot of ancient relics in that sandpan. You know, it's just full of stuff. But, um, you can read the book to find that out. And, um, you know, Rambo blasts it down. Blasts down that gunship with the RPG. And, you know, and, and just as both vessels explode together in fusion, Rambo jumps and swims off. But, you know, while this is happening, keep in mind that the sandpan is actually sinking. Like, it's it's getting blown apart and it's, like, sinking. So Rambo's, like, you know, knee-deep in water. And then he grabs the RPG and takes it out. Takes out the gunship. So, yeah, so Rambo jumps and, and swims off. And um, they're washed about and they reunite downstream. And um, a, fr a pretty funny part. You know, Ko asks uh, Rambo, like, how are you doing, Rambo? And he replies, uh, I'd rather be in Philadelphia. <laughs> Summoning a Rocky joke, I guess. Um, actually, uh, when we talked to David, um, well, you know what? You can wait for that. That's coming up. That's coming up next. So, um, so Troutman rendezvous with Doyle and Erickson for the, um, excursion mission. And Doyle is as high as a fucking kite. And, you know, just reeks of pot. You know, so they set off uh, to go pick up Rambo. And our hero trio is at the excursion point and under approaching attack. You know, Ko wants to go with Rambo as his wife. You know, um, talk about, you know, a proposal indeed. And under pressure, too. And she's really relentless and dedicated. And um, Rambo knowing all the different sides of the stakes you know at hand finally agrees but she's got to hide till the chopper comes you know <clears throat> and the chopper shows up but uh naturally they abort uh the mission once murdoch notices the pow and eventually after and, and you know like the firefight that's going on and um after Rambo and the Chopper, you know, saw down waves of, of bad guys and the Chopper leaves and Rambo's forced to surrender, he's beaten down severely. I mean, like, multiple ball shots severely. And given, you know, gun butt whips and, kick, like, massive kickings and beating Rambo down. And as Cole looks on from, from her hiding spot, vowing to rescue and 
seek revenge on the ones re respo responsible for doing this to her man. It's pretty incredible. And it gets more incredible, you know, from there on in. So, back upon Troutman's return to Murdoch, all the conspiracy is laid out on the table, and the inevitable is inevitable. And it's beautifully, eloquently, you know, eloquent to, like, eloquently written and to read, and eloquent to read, and, and Troutman threatens and is placed under arrest and Murdoch making that one mistake and I'm sure you can guess all what it is Rambo um so then we cut back um and now we're gonna get to one of my most favorite passages in this sequel novelization um one of the author's favorites as well as he informed me and this is cool because this is where the nightmare begins like this is where we go back to what it was actually like for Rambo revisiting you know old times and old friends um so picture this you know Rambo starts coming to and everything's a mazy fog and is it myth or reality what's going on he's hung back on the cross and he's he's awoken and he's face to face with Tay, VC Commander, a.k.a. Stephen Chang. And, like, Stephen's, like, grinding his teeth at him and, like, sneering at him. And, and it's, it's really scary. It's a really, really scary scene. And Rambo is so delusional, he begins to believe that he never had gone back to America at all. It was all an illusion. Some sort of bizarre dream. All the years that had passed. You know like. Going back to America. Everything he had to go through over there. The fight with Teasel. You know it was all a dream. And that he never left this place. That because of his Zen teachings. And beliefs and practices. That he had immersed himself. So deep within himself. That the last almost decade. Had been a, a figment of his imagination. Until Tay holds Rambo's knife up close to his face, teasing the scarred uh, tracings of the past on his flesh in, in, in relishment, I must say, too. Um, Stephen's so evil here because now it's like, now he finally got what he wanted for the last 10 years. It's beautiful. Because if you've read First Blood, and even if you've seen the movie First Blood, you know what you're dealing with at this point. You know, we know um, we know the score between these two, especially more in the novelization, uh, novel First Blood, the First Blood novel from '72. Like Tay was, Tay was horrible to Rambo. Tay, like, you know, cut him up, gave him those scars across the chest with a knife, and then remember he like. He would wait until Rambo was sleeping and sneak up on him and, and stick uh, and stick like this small hook knife into his back to wake him up and like do hook piercings in his back and shit. And who could forget that venomous snake or uh, we're not sure if it's venomous at that point in the book, but they throw a, they starve Rambo and they throw a fucking snake down and Rambo is so starving he bite, he rips off the head and eats it raw. This is what we're dealing with now. And what's even more weird is uh, Stephen's great acting ability. You know, like coming to know Stephen over the last month. You know, we talk a lot. Um, and he's just such a nice guy. He's just such a nice guy. So when he's really generous and, and when, you know, when you remember his character from First Blood, how terrifying and menacing he was. He is truly a master of his craft. And... So it's funny because part of me can't see that, um, like the part of me now can't see that mean Steven doing this in Rambo First Blood Part 2, but we're about to, to discuss um, in the novelization. But the kid in me from way back then seeing Steven for the first time cut Rambo across the chest is like, man, 
he would have killed it in this movie. He would have blown the roof off. Because I'm sure he would have been able to recapture his menace from the original. So, the studios here, I think, made a big mistake because... Um, could you imagine... The showdown is so epic in this. And traces of it, of its finale, are shown in First Blood Part 2 with Vin and Vin's demise. But... Um, man, I gave too much away there. Um, hopefully, hopefully you were getting a snack and you didn't hear that. Um, where was I going with this? Yeah, like, damn. You know, Steven just would have blown the roof off of this. Like, just simply, 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 you know, blown the roof off of this. Like, the character written here for the sequel novelization is just insane, insane, like a master villain. So it sucks that this was never brought up to be in the movie because, man, like, first of all, you got that re reunited thing, you know. Um, secondly, it, 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 it's going to bring a lot of things full circle. Like if they were going to end it with Rambo 2. They could have ended it on that note. Thirdly. The studio. The studio by doing this. Took Steven out of the equation for the sequel. And. Of course we wouldn't have seen the epic showdown. Between Rambo and VC Commander. That we're finally going to see in this one. In this version. In the sequel novelization. So. You know, in a way, VC Commander still lives to fight another day, which is another thing, you know? So, there is hope for to maybe see them cross paths again, but it probably won't happen, you know? Because I, I think, you know, they're probably going to kill Rambo off now, so... I don't think, you know, Rambo would want to cross that bridge again. Like, I think he would, you know, like me personally, and I, I would love to see it. Um... I think that would be the best way to take Rambo out, maybe, in, in one light. <clears throat> Even though I'm really heavy on seeing, like, a Rambo versus the Illuminati um, kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, that would just be fucking stellar. It would just be stellar. Um, so, yeah, let's get back to this scene. I, I kind of lost where I was trying to bring this, this, uh, this thought. But, you know, it's just the studios, they, they could have had a better, a better movie if they would have kind of done it in another way. But I guess, you know, the movie was already being filmed anyway, so the wheels were in motion. So I really, you know, thank my lucky stars that Morel uh, was passionate enough to look at this as a bigger book, you know, to look at it. Not as the novelization it was supposed to be, but to look at it um, with such gallants and, and looking at it from from all the angles, you know, and, and gave us the Rambo 2 that we wish we had. So, so moving on. So, um, Steven's got the knife up to Rambo's face. Rambo realizes, okay, I haven't been lost in my mind for 10 years this is actually happening it's still happening i'm back where i was the shit's hit the fan and you know what the fuck am i gonna do now the real torture is about to begin also keep in mind regarding to the morale thing he only had six weeks to make this book happen and he went above and beyond what i think he would do with maybe even a normal one of his books. And I won't say that as normal because everyone is is um has its own weight to it because everyone is loved. Every, you know, separate one is loved and taken care of and the time is there and he invests so much into writing his book that they all come out beautiful because they all come out very touched and embraced and 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 handled in the womb, so to speak. And, um, you know, just, just jaded perfectly. So, it's just really impressive. You know, really, really impressive. Six, six weeks to get this 
from saying yes to the final to delivery to you know and he had everything 